We have an update to a story we told you about just a few days ago. The Post Millennial is reporting that the Richmond Family Medicine Clinic, which is part of Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, is now placing some blame on the account libs of TikTok on why they say it needed to put measures in place to guard against harassing behavior. And it came after a Portland resident suffering from cancer shared with the account that she was told that she could no longer receive her cancer treatment at the hospital after she she complained about a transgender flag at the entrance. Well, in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott signed the new law, Save Women Sports Act. It will stop biological males from competing in a college-level sports competition meant for biological females. A lot of folks excited here. In fact, the ceremony taking place at the Texas Women's Hall of Fame, and you can see Abbott was joined right there alongside former NCAA athlete Riley Gaines. But listen to her saying what happened after. It was not all celebrations. Uh, we were met with protesters, there were arrests, there were bottles being thrown, there was spit in people's faces, profanities being yelled at children, but that will not deter us and that does not stop the celebration uh, of what we're celebrating today, which is a win for women's sports, it's a win for truth. She's going to keep fighting. Let's welcome in our power panel to talk about this and more. Creator of the playbook for home learning, Sam Sorbo, who is also an author and the host of the Sam Sorbo Show, joins us today. And also Jacqueline Tobaroff, who is an author and a writer. Ladies, welcome in. Good to have you both. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. You know, Riley Gaines, um, who's fighting so hard for young women and, you know, has come under, you know, a bit of violence before. We know that in San Francisco, she had to barricade herself after an angry mob came after her. It does seem like this is a, a repetitive situation every time she goes somewhere, Sam. And it's disturbing, I think, for, for us to watch this and, and to have the media not really share what's going on. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that she's a very brave young woman, and I'm glad that she's standing up because she is the, the perfect spokesperson for this. And I, I find it so distressing that we so easily in our culture are willing to uh, basically eliminate the female sex and just call everyone whatever anything. It, 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 uh, what it does is it undermines the definitions of our words, uh, in fact. And that's why I do the films that I do, like Miracle in East Texas, to, to breathe a little bit of truth back into the culture while the enemies of truth are trying to take it away. And it's no wonder that they're rabid and they're vicious uh, because they they want what they want. And they're, they're basically, they want what they want. They want it now. <laughs> Yeah, and I do also think, too, it's like they you're called a transphobe if you don't want to have, you know, to protect women's sports. Uh, but in reality, they come out, as you said, radical. I mean, Jacqueline, Riley Gaines is out there trying to do something good for young women. It's incredible. In this day and age, people aren't getting behind her and celebrating it. I think the most amazing thing is that her constantly being attacked, as you said, every time she stands up for women is proof that women need protection. Uh, mm. They are rabid on the other side. They are determined to ignore the truth, to ignore science, and they're dangerous. Yeah, and clearly uh, we, we've had her on a lot. She's very, you know, brave and outspoken. I'm sure she'll continue to be so. Um, someone else who was uh, being a little bit outspoken and the PR team wanted him to apologize. It is uh, the singer Neo. Here's what he said, which got him in hot water with some folks. I, I feel like parents have almost almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. Amen. It's like, okay, lost control. if your little boy comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl. And you just let him rock with that? You just let... Right. He's five. Right. And where did he get that if from? If you let this five-year-old boy decide to eat candy all day, he's going to do that. Exactly. Like, when, when did it become a good idea to let a five-year-old, let a six-year-old, let a 12-year-old make a life-changing decision for themselves? So it seems like logical what most parents across America think, but his team was so upset. They issued an apology... Uh, as you see, I'd like to express my deepest apologies. Neo had to clarify on another social media, uh, on Instagram, to clarify saying, I did not apologize for having an opinion on this matter. So that's where we're at, where artists are speaking out and the PR people are so afraid they're going to get canceled. Uh, Sam, your reaction to kind of the non-apology and him standing by what a lot of people say, you know, parents need to parents and it's confusing enough for kids. 
Yeah, I didn't I didn't think his uh, comments warranted any apology. I can't wait for the lawsuits to start of children who have been mutilated suing their parents for allowing that mutilation to take place. That'll start in about 10 or 15 years, I suppose. But um, but this is why, you know, uh, in fact, the film that we did, Miracle in East Texas, talks about forgiveness. We're living in a cancel culture. The first thing I thought when I saw that he apologized was, uh oh, he will be canceled for apologizing now. Um, they will try to cancel him for not apologizing. But I'm glad that he has stood strong and said, I don't apologize for having an opinion. And that really was his, the ultimate point of his statement is, I have my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Everybody's got one. There's nothing unique or, or superior about it. It's just that everybody has an opinion. And don't try to tell me I can't have have an opinion when you darn well know that you want to have your own opinion. And that's really that's really where we should be in our culture today. And it saddens me that we're getting away from that. I hope that people will go see my film. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think the handlers, too, are just like uh, they're working one agenda when we know the real agenda. I mean, us moms out there, um, Sam, you tweeted an image of some books in a bookstore saying, you know, we're coming for your children. Clearly, they're marketing some really outrageous stuff to kids. And Jacqueline, I mean, you're in New York. You probably feel a lot of this, too, where, uh, you know, we've seen the pride celebrations at, at, you know, young kids schools really out of hand. So a couple of things. First, you cannot be an artist if you do not support the First Amendment. Uh, that's number one. There's no such thing as creativity without freedom of speech. Number two, 76% of New York City children in public school in eighth grade are not eighth grade level proficient in math. Talking about books, guess what America's largest teachers union is having the 1.7 million members in the teachers union read over the summer? gender queer. Uh, we are totally backwards. And the panacea, the remedy to this is actually my book, Super Moms Activated, because to Neo's point, parents are not parenting. Parents have to fight back. Yeah, and let that sink in. We have the headline of what you wrote uh, for Human Events. 76% of eighth graders in New York City public school students years behind in math. I mean, I am... I'm worried about the future generations. I know the COVID lockdowns were so uh, hurtful to so many kids that had to, you know, suffer from this. And, and I think also to your point, when you have books like Gender Queer, parents now do know they have been activated, Sam. They see what is basically soft porn in some of their libraries and some of their school curriculums. Yeah, when are we going to wake up and understand that the schools are not interested in education? The schools are not interested in the education of your children. They are more interested in grooming your children, and that is not education. But why are we so enslaved by our schools to think that we have to surrender our children to strangers for grooming? So parents, wake up, take your kids out of school. You can go to samsorbo.com or sorbostudios.com. I have plenty of resources mm -hmm. for how to get the education of your children done. Or look at uh, Jacqueline's book and, uh, and look Look at what she has to offer. There are plenty of resources out there. We are not the only ones. There are plenty of people who are getting this done without the aid of these uh, nefarious teachers unions and nefarious books that are in our classrooms where you have no control. Yeah, education, not indoctrination. And I do I do support everything you ladies are doing. I know not everyone uh, can do homeschool, but there's certain ways. Yes, they you can. Know, if you can, if no, you can, can. If you have to go to everyone work, though, can. there's a way to kind of work it in. They, they feel that they are, are, there's a solution for them, and they need to kind of explore that. But thank you so much. Got to leave it there. Sam Sorbo, Jacqueline Toberoff. Thank you, ladies. Good to see you both. Thank you. Thanks so much.